So my name is Sarah Peston and I work in the Department of Technology Enhanced Learning here in MTU. And I'll just go over everything that I'm going to cover today. So I'll cover accessing Zoom, um, scheduling Zoom class, um, audio and video setups, so making sure your audio and video is working well, um, allowing participants entry, sharing your screen, um, what to do for a recording, and then I'll do a tour of some useful features. And we're actually launching a brand new feature um, this week as well, so I can tell you about that too. Um, so for logging in now, many of you have logged in to attend this session, but if you're watching the recording or watching the live YouTube stream, you might not have. So I, um, a lot of this I've done in pre-recorded rather than live demo, just because it's very hard to show Zoom while you're actually using Zoom. So this is just a recording. So I'm just going to click play on this. Um, and this is when you have the Zoom downloaded on your machine. This is what the desktop client looks like and what you need to do. So make sure I'm sharing my screen. Yep. What you need to do is um, when you're signing in, you're not actually um, you're not actually typing your email and password here. You're going to click the SSO button. So I'll just press play again so you can see that. So you click SSO. And then I'm just going to go back on that recording a little bit so you can see um, if you're prompted for a company domain, you type in TLCIT. You probably only have to do this once. That's why it quickly pops through for me because I've done it once before. Um, and then you click continue. And then it should load up on your browser. So it'll take a few seconds and you're going to log in um, the similar way that you would for Canvas mm -hmm. or for WorkVivo. Um, all your other Microsoft, uh, all your other accounts. So I'm just going to go again. So I just blurred out my account information, but you just click in, um, put in your password, sign in, and you'll do your authentication that you do um, for signing into Canvas or other things like that. Um, and then you'll see once you've confirmed on your authentication on the app on your phone, you'll set, get that link and then open and now you're logged into Zoom on desktop. Um, I'll move on. So now I'm going to show you a live demo of how to, um, how to schedule a Zoom class from Canvas. So I'm just going to get out of this presentation and open up the, the window. So one second there. Here we go. So I just have a... Um, training canvas module that we have here that we use for training um, and I'll show you how to schedule zoom classes from here so on your modules in canvas you'll see in the navigation pane on the left there's always a zoom tab and that's where you can schedule your zoom classes for your students so that you can access them from canvas and so can your students so if I just click zoom here you'll see there's no upcoming meetings, but th there's a tab for upcoming meetings, previous meetings. So you can see here, we've done previous ones here and cloud recordings. So the cloud recordings tab means that if you've recorded the lecture for your students, you don't need to share a link with those students to, to watch the recording. Um, it'll automatically go onto that tab if you've recorded that lecture that was scheduled from here. Um, so if you want to set up a uh, class, uh, Zoom class, you just click this um, button here, schedule a new meeting, and then you can give it a topic name so you can edit it to whatever you want if it's just a, a weekly class or something like that, and you can give it a description. Um, and then you can say what time it's on. So say you have a class that's every, every Thursday at 2 p.m., you can change it. So I'm going to put this as Thursday. We're starting this Thursday, 2 p.m. And it's one hour long, but I can edit that to whatever I want as well. Um, and then time zone is just Ireland. Um, and if it's a recurring meeting, so if you have the same class every Thursday at, um, at 2 p.m., you can just click recurring meeting. And I would change it to weekly because it's going to happen every week rather than every day. Um, and then say repeat every one week. But if you had the class only every two weeks, you can change that. Um, and I'm going to say every Thursday. 
Um, and then you could either say it ends by a certain date or you can say it ends after however many, so let's say 12 occurrences. Um, then I, we can, you, you generally wouldn't need to do registration for these classes just because if students are enrolled on the module and accessing this Canvas module, they can, they should be able to access this by clicking Zoom. Also with passcode, um, this would you would only really need that if only certain students you wanted um, to join that meeting. Um, but one thing you should pay attention to is the security thing, the um, who can join the meeting. So there's two options there. So the first option is only MTU, Cork students and staff. So obviously the students that are enrolled on this module can go in and click on the Zoom and then um, join it. But you could also um, share that link with other students if you want to as well, but only other students in this instance. Um, or if you have an external speaker, so if you have a guest lecturer coming um, one of the weeks or something like that, you might want to change it to all authenticated users. Now that guest speaker or, you know, the guest that's coming to join the session, they wouldn't have access to Canvas, so you'll have to share a link with them. I can show you what that looks like in a few minutes. Then down here, there's just a few more settings like video. That's just um, the default if the default is that um, the host video was on when they start or off. Um, you can skip these because they're um, locked. Then um, one other thing I just want to mention down here as well is um, if you want to record the meeting automatically. So you have two options, really. Um, you could tick this and that means that when you when a host starts the meeting, it'll be recorded automatically from the time that you start that meeting. Um, the only caveat, to, the only thing to think of in that is that it will record everything. So you have a little chat at the start of the meeting, it will record that too. You can go back and trim it later um, when you when the recording is done. Um, alternatively, you could not tick that and just remember every week to click record when you're actually in the Zoom meeting. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Um, so then when you're happy with all the settings and all of that, you just click save. And then we have the meeting set up and here's the join URL. So this is what you would send to those external people, say, um, if you were at guest lecturers or or something, you'd copy this link or copy the meeting invitation, copy that and send that to them. And then they'll be able to join as well without needing access to this module in Canvas. Um, but if I go back, just click on the Zoom tab again, you'll see this is all of the meetings that I just made, 12 different meetings. Um, and because I am the lecturer, I can just click start and go into that meeting. I'm not going to click start because I'm currently running this webinar. Um, also to see this from the student's perspective, I'm just going to click home, click view as student, um, and then click on the Zoom tab as well. And you can see students also see the join button here, so they'll only see it for the, the next one. So they, they can't join one for a future week. It will be the one that's closest to them, if you get me. Um, and then there's also cloud recordings that they can access. And this is from previous training that we've done. Um, right, so I'm just going to leave student view. Um, and I'm going to delete those. So I just go delete this meeting and I can delete the occurrence or delete all of the occurrences. So I'm just going to delete them all. Okay, so that's how you do that. Um, now I'm going to go back into the presentation. So Second. There we go. So I have to skip through these again. Right. So the next thing I want to show you is once you have started a, a Zoom meeting, you want to set up your audio and video. So first thing is audio. So there's a button you can probably all see now if you're on Zoom that audio button where you can turn your audio on or off. Um, and there's also a little up arrow beside the icon, the audio icon that you can click. And then you'll see there's options. Um, there's options to select a microphone, 
or select the speaker. So if I just play that again, so you might have two microphones. You might have the internal microphone of your machine and also a headset, like I'm wearing a headset. Um, and you can see there's that's the headset and that's just the actual internal microphone. And also you could have an option for a webcam microphone that comes up too. So you can click through and make sure you're collect um, and see if you're and click the speaker and microphone. And if you're not sure if you have the right ones, there's a good option here is to click test speaker and microphone. So when you click that, now you, you won't be able to hear it. Hold on, lost that. When you click that, um, it'll play a sound through whatever selected speaker that you selected. And if you can't hear it, say no, try another speaker. But if you can, then click yes. So that means that you've got the right speaker. And the same with microphone, except it asks you to speak and pause and then it will replay. And if you can hear it, that means that your microphone is the correct microphone as well and it should all work for you. And you just click yes and then everything's set up. It says it's working properly. Um, and then similarly for video, you can see here there's a video button. So you can turn that on or off as well. So you can just see I've clicked here and my video is on. You can see I can select which camera as well. So my laptop has an integrated webcam, but I also have an external Logitech Bio um, webcam. So I can click between those. Um, and I can also uh, blur my background. So I have blur my background turned on, but I could turn that off if I wanted to. Um, and I also can change to a virtual background. So when you click that, you can see there's a, um, everybody in MTU has the option, I think, to use any of these backgrounds. When they click virtual backgrounds, you can go through those as well. Um, also for settings, you can go and click on video settings. I've just lost it there. One second. Uh, video settings. Yeah, so you just click video settings um, and you can change some settings there. So um, you can change it to HD. I lost the pitch. HD, um, you can mirror your video, you can touch up your appearance. Basically, what that means is um, it's a filter, so it'll just smooth your appearance if you want that. Um, there's also some adjustments for low light and portrait lighting, so you can try those out and see what works best for you. It's the basics of setting up video. Um, and then when, when you have students that start to actually join the meeting, basically what, um, what happens is they don't get a, um, automatically added to your class, your meeting. Um, they're sent to a waiting room and you then admit them when you're ready to start the class. So I'll show you what that looks like from, a, from an instructor, from a lecturer side. So you'll see this means that Jane is in the waiting room. And then when I'm ready to admit her, I can just click admit. And it's a good idea to keep an eye on that because there could be some latecomers to your class or something. So you have to keep admitting people as they come in. Um, then if you're sharing your screen, just go back. There's a share button at the bottom of the, in, in the Zoom window. And you can click that. So if I'll just show you, you click share, and then you have the options of shoot, sh sharing whatever screen. So um, I'm connected to two different screens there, so I can choose which one I want to share. Um, screen or one or two screen two, or, or you have the option of um, sharing specific applications. So you can see I have um, PowerPoint open there. Um, also Chrome, so I could just share that window if I wanted to. There's also layouts that you can do. So, very careful.
there's also um different layouts that you can try out so you can just see me here um trying out different layouts so i just clicked here and then it just changes so you can see it has my face in front of things you can also do wallpapers as well so if you want to try those things out and see what the best way of displaying things are um, another thing i'm pointing out here is share sound so if you're sharing your screen and you want to show your students a youtube video or a song or something something that has audio then you need to click um, share sound on it um, and then it'll share the sound of whatever your whatever is on your computer with your students. And if you don't want to share sound, if you don't want them to hear your computer sounds, then untick that box. Um, and then when you're ready, you just click share. And then it'll share your screen and it'll show you what you're sharing in this little window. Um, then recording. So if you want to record your session and you haven't clicked to auto record, I'm just going to guess play. There's a record icon at the bottom and you click record to cloud. Um, and then that will record to the cloud. We don't have local recording, but you'll get a link and you'll be able to access it through your Zoom account. So through that, you can pause and resume the recording. There's pause and resume buttons down at the bottom. Uh, and then next, I'm going to show you um, so on this slide. Um, you can do slides as virtual background is a cool feature. So I'll just press play. You click share and there's an advanced tab and you can do PowerPoint as background. And it's a, a little bit of a cleaner because you're sharing the actual PowerPoint to Zoom. It looks a bit cleaner. Um, but you click share and then you find the file. And rather than sharing your screen, you're sharing the file itself, kind of. And then, then it load up and then it'll have your face in front of it as well. And you can go through it that way. Um, annotation is another feature that you can do. So you can either have the you can annotate your screen yourself, or you can have everybody in your in the class be able to annotate. So just press play and show. So you click share and share your screen. So I'm just sharing a screen there, um, and you can see there's an annotate button is at the top of the screen, um, and then on that that will bring up this list here. So you can go through that and. Um, And you can enable or disable annotation. I'm just going to move over so I don't have any issues. Right. So then there are options here for annotating on the screen. So you can see here there's a text one. So you can add text onto the screen. Um, and then you can change the color of it as well. And you can drag it around with the arrows. There's also a um, little pen tool for drawing as well. And you can change the colors and do that too. Um, and then you can do shapes as well. There's also stamps. So if you can do a little stamp, see I have the star stamp there. And there's a highlight. So if you just want to bring students' attention to something while you're doing the annotation, you can use the highlight. Um, then I'm just, I was just showing, I'll go back. Um, I'll just showing the eraser so you can erase what you've done or you can undo and redo stuff as well. For all your, all the drawings, all my drawings or, or all everybody else's drawings and you can download it as a, as a image or a PDF as well at the end. So you're saved so you can get to it after the session. And then when you're done, you just stop sharing. Um, so now I'm going to talk about the two new things that we have with Zoom. So they are meeting summaries and smart note recording. Both of these features are powered by the, the Zoom AI companion. Um, so with meeting summaries, there are summaries that, that um, you can get after a meeting as ended. So basically Zoom AI listens to what's said in a meeting and then sends you or possibly other people a summary. This is 
particularly good if you're having like a meeting with colleagues, less so um, for students, because you kind of, you're only sending it to um, invitees of a meeting, not just if it's a general meeting, if you get me. Um, it does not need to be a recorded meeting. You can just turn on the AI, uh, the AI companion, and it'll listen, but you don't actually have to have recorded that meeting. Um, and then smart recording um, has a few elements in it. So there's recording highlights of your recorded videos. So this is when you actually have recorded um, a meeting or, or a lecture. Smart chapters as well. That's where they break it up into chapters for you. And you can edit the text on those. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. Next steps. So it'll um, bring up a list of next steps that um, you might have said at the end of the meeting um, that it'll detect and then show to the students or to whoever's in your meeting looking at the recording. And then meeting coach is like, it gives you scores, like percentage scores on how you've done um, in the recording. And that's speci specifically good um, if you're practicing to do a presentation or, or you just want to see how, how well you're doing doing the lecture, you know. Uh, so um, to do that, I'm going to show you how to set up meeting summaries and smart recording. So again, I'm going to exit out uh, and go in. So you can go to tlcit.zoom.us to get to your account. You sign in similar to the way I showed you earlier. Um, and if you want to turn on any of these features, they're completely optional, so you don't have to use them at all. And you can also test them out um, and then turn them off again if you don't want them. Um, but the first one, the meeting summary one that I mentioned, um, that's going to be if you go to settings um, and then you see meeting summary with AI companion. So you can turn that on or off with this toggle. So it's to the right. That means I have it turned on. And these are the recommended uh, settings that I say you should use when you're testing it out and then you can change them to however you want. So I have it set that it's not it's not going to happen automatically when a meeting starts. So that would be every meeting I would start, I would get a summary every time. And I'd rather, um, at least when I'm testing it out, just to be able to turn that on um, myself. And I show you actually what that looks like when we go back into the presentation. Um, then I have it set to um, send an email notification um, when sharing it with users. So there's two options there. Um, you can have the summary text sent in that email. So we'll have an email with the summary in it, or you can um, not have the summary text in the email and it'll just link you to the summary text as well. So that's really up to you how you want to do that. Um, I have it set up that the summary will just be shared to me. So I'll, I'll get the summary email as the host. You could include co-hosts as well, an alternative host, so everybody gets the summary email. Um, or you could do yourself and meeting invitees or all meeting invitees. So this is generally for anyone that you send an, um, a meeting invitation to. Um, and not so much useful for classes, I would say. But what you can do is um, copy the text from that summary and then send that out to your class in a Canvas announcement or something like that. Um, and then just for the other feature, which is the smart recording, you just scroll down on that same page and you can turn that on. So it's called smart recording with AI companion. Um, and then you can turn on each of these different features individually, which I will show you in a moment. Um, so there's recording highlights, smart chapters, next steps, and meeting coach. Um, so I will first show you um, what it looks like, what these meeting summaries look like. So I have it here. It's on this meeting summary tab here. Um, and I did a practice presentation yesterday and I turned on the meeting summary um, for that. So you can see what it looks like took for mine and I haven't edited it at all. So you can see here meeting summary for practice presentation. So you can see here it says Sarah Sarah Paxton. So I can see just from looking at that they got my name wrong, but that's easily edited. But the rest of the content here, it's like it's what I've covered in today's session as it was my practice meeting. It's quite accurate. So you can just 
when you do your meeting summaries, they're editable. So you can just click edit and I can just replace that with my correct surname. Um, and then that's really handy. So when then people go and view your summary, um, they'll be able to see everything there. Um, and you can also share from here as well, but it's just to individual people. But you could copy all the text from here if you wanted to, and then post that on, on Canvas for students as well. But there is another thing if you are recording. If you're recording a class that also has summaries, which is separate to this, which I'll show you as well. So you, for the recording um, features, I'm just going to click into recordings. Um, and you'll see here there is a practice presentation. Again, that was from yesterday. I did a recording of it. You'll see here I have two recordings that you can click into. So one of them is the highlights because recording highlights is one of the features we'll be covering. But I'm going to go into the main recording here first. And then you'll see here. So this is a video when I was practicing yesterday. Um, and I've got the summary here. So if there's a summary that, that, that students can read or whoever you're sharing the recording with. Again, it's got the name wrong. So you can edit that yourself. Um, also, Smart Chapters. So Smart Chapters is where the Zoom AI takes the video and cuts it up into chapters based on what you're talking about. Now, it might not be... Um, 100% accurate. So you can go in and you can edit the smart chapters. You can edit where they are as well. Um, and you can edit text um, and the description as well for all of the chapters that it's generated. But it's just doing a little bit of the work for you, basically. Um, and then you can see on the right here the next steps that I mentioned. So it says share, to share the meeting recording with the attendees so they can review the session on Zoom Essentials. So that's what I'll actually be saying at the end of the session. Um, and then um, one other thing is the, the highlights. So you'll see here these um, yellow lines here are the highlights on the video. So when you record a video and you have recording highlights turned on, Zoom will pick up where it thinks there are highlights of the video. Um, and originally when I did this recording, it, there was lots and lots of highlights in it. And I just went through and re removed most of them um, just to show you in this example. Um, but if I want to edit the highlights, I just click edit highlight. I can highlight, um, go over it and click remove or I can make them longer. So I can just go through the video and pick where I want my highlight to be. Um, and I can add another one if I want, or remove it. And if I'm happy with them and say you want your students, you have a two hour long video, but you only want your students to, to watch a certain part or you want to focus on a certain part, you can make these highlights. And then if you click save highlights, it will make another recording that you can share with students. So that's what I mean by um, when I go to this link, the highlights, because I did that earlier, I clicked save highlights and then I have the highlights here. And then that's just a six minute video. It's just all those yellow bits. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to just go back into the slides again one more time. Um, So this is just to show you how to, to, so if you have the meeting summaries turned on that I showed you earlier, um, that'll make this button on your, um, on your Zoom come up called AI Companion. So you just click that button there, AI Companion, and click Start Summary, and then it'll start listening to you um, when you're having your meeting. And if you want to turn it off again, you just click that again and say stop summary or end and you can delete the whole thing if you want to. Um, yeah. So that's really it for today. Um, just going to mention some of the supports that we have. So we have our department website, which is tel.cit.ie. Um, help guides um, are at tel.help.eu.helpdocs.com. 
if that's hard to remember, you can just find it through the gal.cit.ie. And we also have a YouTube 